Melisander taught Stannis was the prince that was promised and she gave him many prophecies. That was in season 2. To many she was the crazy red witch who sees visions in the fire. But many of her prophecies have indeed come true. In season 2 she predicted the Night King and the army of the dead. This war of five kings means nothing. The true war lies to the north, my king. Death marches on the wall. When Stannis wanted to kill Sir Davos for releasing his prisoner Gendry, yes, Gendry was actually going to be killed by Stannis. She was the one that put a stop to it because she felt Davos would be useful in the battles to come. I, Stannis of the House Baratheon, first in my name, rightful King of the Andals, and the first men sentence you to die. I understand. But since you haven't yet unnamed me Hand of the King, it is my duty to advise you against it. You're gonna need me. He's right. You need him. He has a part to play in the war to come. She was right. Sir Davos was useful to Jon Snow as his hand and played a great role in the battle with the dead. <laughs> Though some of Melisandre's visions were true, she was wrong in naming Stannis the prince that was promised. She realized her mistake when Stannis died and she raised Jon Snow from the dead. She realized he was the prince that was promised. The Lord let you come back for a reason. Stannis was not the prince who was promised, but someone has to be. That means some of the prophecies she gave to Stannis is actually meant for Jon Snow and is still at play. We could see the fulfillment of her prophecies in the next two episodes. This war has just begun. It will last for years. Thousands will die at your command. You will betray the man serving you. You will betray your family. You will betray everything you once held dear. And it will all be worth it. Because you are the son of fire. You are the warrior of light. You will sweep aside this pretender and that one. You will be king. Well, Danny's vision in the House of Undying also foreshadows the end. She sees the Red Keep destroyed, the roof blown open, not a single soul in the room. Snow and cold is falling in the throne room. This means the Red Keep that sits the throne room will definitely be destroyed by either Drogo's fire or wildfire set off by Cersei because she would rather burn the city down than surrender. So we are yet to wait and see who will actually destroy the Red Keep. It could be Cersei or it could be Danny's dragon. The snow falling in the throne room could signify death, lifelessness, or it could have an entirely different meaning. The entire series is hinged on a song of ice and fire. If Danny, a pure Targaryen, is representative of fire, John, who has the blood of Ristar in his eyes and with snow all over the throne room, do we imagine Jon Snow takes the throne? Danny reaches for the throne but never gets to touch it. Maybe she's like John the Baptist in the Bible. Her role was simply to clear the pathway and make a way for the prince that was promised. She also sees a vision of herself going beyond the wall, a, prophes a prophecy that has already been fulfilled. Her dragon Viserion lets out a wild scream as she makes her way into the other side of the wall. What a foreshadowing. Finally, she meets with her husband and baby. This scene seems to foreshadow that she will die and meet Khal Drogo again. She, but rather than stay with Khal Drogo, she repeated the words that the witch said to her in season one, a line that meant at that time that her husband will never come back to her. Until the sun rises in the west and sets in the east. Until the rivers run dry 
and the mountains blow in the wind like leaves. She repeating those words and walking away from her husband could have a different meaning at the time. It means she's probably not ready to die and she is just not done with life. So even though it means she will die, but maybe a close brush with death, maybe she actually doesn't die, you know. So we're yet to see. When Cersei was a teenager, she visited the witch Maggie the Frog, who could tell the future. The witch told Cersei she would marry the king and be a queen, but for a while, until someone younger, more beautiful, cast her down and take everything she holds dear. You are the king. But I will be queen. Oh yes. You will be queen. For a time. And comes another, younger, more beautiful, to cast you down and take all you hold dear. Will the king and I have children? No, the king will have twenty children, and you will have three. That doesn't make sense. Gold will be their crowds. Gold, their shrouds. Shroud is a, is a cloth for covering the dead in the medieval times and gold will be their shroud simply means they are all, all her kids are going to die. But the prophecy have come true. Tess's kids are all dead. One, one prophecy is yet to be fulfilled. The younger, more fairer and beautiful one that will cast her down and take everything she holds dear. Right now the only thing she holds dear is the baby on her tummy. If she's indeed pregnant and her throne, Ceci is obsessed with power. So who is this young one that will cast her down and take everything she holds there? If part of the prophecy suggests that Danny will never sit on the throne. So could it be Danny married to Jon Snow? Or could it be Sansa? Or Arya Stark? <laughs> We're yet to see. These prophecies leave us with more questions than answers. But with two episodes left, we have to see how the prophecies will come full circle.